Nano instrumentation is concerned about technologies that enable nanoscale measurements and interaction with the environment. In this video, design of high-speed and large-range nanopositioners, along with their application in nanoscale microscopy, is discussed. Many precision instruments rely on our ability to control the position of a probe or sample. Scanning probe microscopy with many industrial and scientific applications is one example. As you can see in this animation, by interacting a probe with a sample on a point-by-point -point basis, one can form a 3D image of surface properties. The resolution of these types of microscopes goes well beyond what is offered by optical or even electron microscopy techniques. The video on the left shows operation of a conventional atomic force microscope. The sample is moved back and forth with respect to a probe, and an image of the sample surface is formed line by line. Although very precise, such systems rely on how fast we can move the probe or the sample, and as a result, are very slow. Imagine we need to visualize a dynamic process, one that changes very quickly over time. The video on the right shows an example of such a process, captured using the technologies developed in this research. But why can't we just move faster? At high speeds, dynamic effects become dominant. On the right, we can see two microscopy images captured at speeds that are just slightly above the nanopositioner capability. The artifacts that appear in these images are caused by the vibrations induced in the nanopositioner at high speed. By driving the positioner even faster, these effects will completely dominate capture images and may also damage the probe or the sample. One solution is to design stiffer nanopositioners that do not vibrate so easily. However, stiffening the positioner reduces the available positioning range, which is another very important characteristic of a nanopositioning system. The range of a nanopositioner in general, or in other words, the field of view in the context of nanoscale microscopy, is as important as the speed. Many samples of interest have features that are too large. The image on the right shows rad neurons on a substrate. Each neuron is tens of microns wide and so require a large field of view microscope. Large range has other practical implications as well. Imagine a scientist that is forced to study a small portion of a sample without having an idea how the rest of the sample looks like. Ideally, to determine an area of interest, one needs to be able to get a large view before zooming into an area of interest for additional study. The series of images at the bottom of the slide shows one such example scenario. To achieve large positioning range and high speed at the same time, we propose a nanopositioner design composed of several actuators, some featuring high speed and short range denoted in red, others slow but with large kinematic range denoted in blue. Serial arrangement of multiple nanopositioners, however, leads to dynamic coupling. In other words, actuating one positioner will excite the dynamics of other interconnected actuators. This generates additional challenges which need to be handled by proper mechanical design of the individual nanopositioners, optimal arrangement or distribution of the masses in the multi-actuated system, and finally application of robust and at the same time tunable control strategies to accommodate system dynamic variations. In this example design, the nanopositioner contains five components, two for out-of-plane or Z-positioning, two for high-speed lateral X-direction, and one for lateral Y-direction. This design achieves three orders of magnitude improvement in speed compared to conventional nanopositioners, but without any compromise in the kinematic range. As discussed earlier, one important application of precision positioning is in microscopy. However, nanoscale microscopy instruments operate similar to production lines where a single slow component slows down the whole process. As such, the benefit from the speed performance of our nanopositioner in atomic force microscopy, all other components of AFM, including the optics, optoelectronics, actuator drives, and even data login and visualization, need to be redesigned. Here you can see our fully custom atomic force microscope with all the associated components designed for high throughput performance. This instrument is used in various real-time chemical, electrochemical, and biological studies as shown in the next few slides. 
In the first experiment, we visualize the process of calcite dissolution in a low pH solution of sulfuric acid. The experiment starts at a large view, nearly 70 by 70 micrometers, and gradually zoom into areas of the sample that feature a high density of nanopits. This pitting on the sample surface is caused by initial exposition of the calcite surface to DI water. Upon acid injection, we can see the layer-by-layer -layer dissolution of the calcite. Closer analysis of the video revealed that the dissolution direction of the layers was more or less influenced by the direction of calcite crystalline. We then repeated the same experiment, but this time on a piece of freshly cleaved calcite without any initial pits on the surface. This video shows a completely different nature for the dynamics of the solution at the nanoscale. As obvious from the growing trapezoid structures on the surface, the calcite crystal structure very clearly loses the dissolution. Furthermore, instead of bulk dissolved layers, the solution initiates and progresses at many random sites which subsequently merge. This simple experiment shows how minute changes on the initial surface condition can tremendously affect the dissolution behavior of the sample in a corrosive environment. Studies like this can help us develop new surface engineering techniques for corrosion and their resistance. In another experiment, we visualized the nucleation growth of copper on a gold substrate in a solution of copper chloride. Throughout the experiment, we apply voltage pulses to activate periods of electrode deposition followed by dissolution. A peculiarity of this process observed from the video is in the fact that the density of nucleation sites increases from one pulse to next. While on the very first pulse, only a couple of nucleates appear on the sample surface, by the last voltage pulse, almost all the surface is covered. Videos like this will help us improve electrodeposition quality in various industries such as microelectronics. Another important application of similar studies is in battery research, for example to understand the underlying parameters that influence dendrite growth, a leading cause of battery failure in lithium batteries. Many other studies in biology, medicine, and material sciences will be enabled by high-throughput precision instruments such as the one discussed here.